a reading from Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. I kneel in prayer to the Father. All beings in heaven and on earth receive their life from him. God is wonderful and glorious. I pray that his spirit will make you become strong followers and that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. Stand firm and be deeply rooted in his love. I pray that you will, and all of God's people will understand what is called wide or long or high or deep. I want you to know all about Christ's love, although it is too wonderful to be measured. Then your lives will be filled with all that God is. I pray that Christ Jesus and the church will forever bring praise to God. His power at work in us can do far more than we can dare ask or imagine. Amen. This is one of my favorite texts. I just enjoy how Paul prays for the church and the beautiful words that Paul uses about deeply rooted God's love, the height, the depth of God's love for us and creation. This is also a text that is used by our synod as part of their devotional life with themselves and with different committees of the synod. Each time they dwell on these words, hearing how God may speak to them through this text. This past weekend was our synod council meeting, and we use this text once again for our council. And as I was reflecting on this text, something amazing happened to me. I've read this text many times, and for the first time, I got a sense, what if Paul was actually praying for me now? Oftentimes when we think of Scripture, we think about something in the past. We read the stories and the prayers as if they happened sometime in the past, but really has no bearing on the present day. I began to wonder, what would it be like if I believed that Paul was, in fact, kneeling in prayer to God? And was praying these things for me, for us. I wonder how Scripture would come alive if we read the stories more in the now than in the past. God tells us that time is not relevant to God. That we are the ones bound by time, not God. We hear in Jesus when he's on the cross and he looks at the thief, you will be with me in paradise this day even though we claim he's not raised for three days. Maybe our understanding of time keeps us from seeing and experiencing the real power of Jesus in our lives. This past Sunday, many of us heard the story of the road to Emmaus, where Jesus encounters the two disciples on the way home, back to Emmaus. We hear how Jesus met them on that journey, encountered them, shared with them, Scripture, the breaking of bread. I wonder what it would be like for us to believe that Jesus meets us on our roads. To look for that stranger who comes with words of God's love and grace in our life. I wonder what it would be like if we, when we read that story of the road to Emmaus, that we're the unknown disciple. We're walking with Clevis, waiting to go home, leaving behind what we hoped. And there Jesus encounters us. Oftentimes people say the Bible just isn't relevant to their lives. It's not relevant because we think it's something in the past. It's some past event. It's some past wisdom. But what if we saw and could understand Scripture speaking to us today? How would this prayer be different for you if you knew that Paul was it just praying for that early church, but Paul continues to pray for you? That that prayer that Paul prayed transcends time. That prayer continues to resonate in our lives in the world. What if we saw our own prayer life beyond just what we're praying for that moment in time when we saw our prayers continue to expand into time? That our prayers are prayers for people we do not yet know. That when we pray for peace, or healing, or wisdom. We're not just praying for that situation that we're thinking about. We are praying for things we do not yet know, but yet our prayers are being answered. How would your prayer life be if you trusted that the prayers that you pray have consequences now and in the future? 
what if you see God outside of time? That everything that is happening is happening now. And that you are in the midst of God's kingdom being revealed. You are experiencing Jesus' presence just like those early disciples did. That Jesus' words, the prayers of the church, continue to be answered and revealed in our lives together. I invite you now to listen again to this prayer of Paul. To hear these words spoken into your life. To know that Paul is praying for you. As you do that, I invite you to watch the ocean scene that will be on the screen. And allow that water, that, the water of the ocean to wash over you. As Paul's prayers washes over your life. Water is a great symbol of how God enters into our world. And I invite you to allow the waters of the ocean to fill you to wash over you, to cleanse you. Hear these prayers of Paul. I kneel in prayer to the Father. All beings in heaven and on earth receive their life from him. God is wonderful and glorious. I pray that his spirit will make you become strong followers and that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. Stand firm and be deeply rooted in his love. I pray that you and all of God's people will understand what is called wide or long or high or deep. I want you to know all that Christ about Christ's love. Although it is too wonderful to be measured, then your lives will be filled with all that God is. I pray that Christ Jesus and the church will forever bring praise to God. His power at work in us can do far more than we can dare ask or imagine. Amen.